Hey, girl. girl. You look gorgeous. Tell Thank me you. about tonight's loop. Do I look relevant? So yes. I'm <laughs> so I'm giving you Groundhog Day, but make it Gen Z. I'm like very a very much. Yeah, very very that. I'm giving you genderqueer Adam Sandler. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you Drew Barrymore forgets every morning on a boat. You know what I mean? Gender queer Adam Sandler is really, it's just, it's, you know what it is? It's the bucket hat that like completes that look. Yeah. I feel like this look is doing a lot of this. Yes, 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 yes. Which is also very Gen Z. That's very exciting. Yeah. I mean, it all comes back around. The truth is like we were getting these accessories from Hot Topic in the 90s. And I now, know. And you know. It's what? a waiting Even game. Then... It's it's the long con. They come back in style, so don't throw anything out. <laughs> I... But here's the thing. I feel like they change them just enough so it's useless to save the stuff. Like, I hate... You know what I mean? Yeah. I was just clocked in the chat by uh, Sam Baradeus. Hi, Sam. So glad you're Hi, here. Sam. Sam says, I'm getting hangover vibes. How dare you for noticing that? <laughs> Frankly, how dare you? Yeah, right. And, and let me tell you why, Sam. <laughs> she is hungover. Let me tell you why. Because, no. Um, I love that. I, I didn't pull off a bucket out in the 90s, and I'm not about to start now. <laughs> I'm surely you, not starting now. I'm ready to go fishing. Did you pull it off in the 90s? No. Like, is this a, okay. No. So it's interesting when a trend comes back, and you're like, well, I, 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 I missed it the first time. Well, you know I mean? like, yeah, low rise jeans. Like, is this your time to shine? Right. No. But here's the thing. I was also six in the 90s. So I was not like I was not fashionable. Ah! I was doing like Lisa Frank bracelet beaded, you know, the kits where you can make your own beaded bracelets. I was doing that and listening to a cassette tape on one side of which was Wannabe by the Spice Girls. And on the flip side was Mbop by Hanson. And let me was tell it, you. Was it sold like that or did you record it from the radio? No, it came that way. Huh. They don't make them like they used to. It was born that way. That's right. <laughs> and let me tell you, not only did I wear that tape completely out, like the everything broke. The tape lost its like magnet magnetization. Like you could you could barely hear it anymore. And the tape player that I was using started to slow down. So I swear to God, it was like slow motion. Like I tell you what I want, what I really, you know what I mean? They were like, please make it end. This is my I favorite tape. Love this. It's a great moment this in time. It's amazing. I had the Spice Girls CD and I had the Hanson CD. So I, I really was ahead of the curve, I feel like. Yeah, girl, talk about commitments. I committed to wearing that tape completely out. So if you have to pick Spice Girls Wannabe or Mbop by Hanson, one song, have to choose it. Go. Well, hey, you know, I had I had the combination Taco Bell Pizza Hut. I didn't have to choose. Why choose when you can have side A, side B realness? I could just flip Bunch between the two of them. Bisexual answer. Yeah, but if you force me, if you force I am me to choose, you. yeah, uh, I'm gonna take the centrist route. Just kidding. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna pick both. Um, I think if I had to pick between Hanson and Spice Girls, I would definitely pick the Spice Girls. Yeah, same. Same. I mean, yeah, Hanson, cool. they were they were great, but they were sort of a flash in the pan, right? Like Spice Girls, Mama, that's forever. Yes. Oh my God, my ex who we live with made me watch Spice World. Like it was one of their favorite movies. It's incredible. I, you know, I will say I never really got into it, but I think it was also because I didn't watch it when it came out. And I think the nostalgia of that moment is just so beautifully captured in that movie. We should watch it again sometime. I rewatched it in a, sometime in the last couple of years. I want to say it was like a 2020 thing when I was like lying on the floor and staring at the ceiling. And I was like, let's watch Spice World. What if <laughs> I just take all of my shows off my calendar and then die? Yes, yeah, I yeah. remember that. Isn't yeah. <laughs> so that was a 2020 moment. I was like, I need Alan Cumming in a chest wig. I need Meatloaf yes. driving a tour bus. Um, and it's it's so <laughs> nonsense. Where can I get it all? <laughs> Where? Where? <laughs> And it's so nonsensical and non sequitur that it, it yeah. just like, it, talk about escapism. It fully takes you out of any commitment to reality. See how I'm looping back into the topic there? I love it. Yo, <laughs> our theme tonight is commitment, yeah. dear readers. Uh, but I am, I am excited to talk about it because last week we couldn't. Because, ironic, you're wearing lightning earrings because you didn't have that last week. We had a power outage situation. <laughs> that may or may not have been on purpose, by the way. I mean, I did also just like these earrings, but, like, I wanted to... We love a callback. Um, speaking a call of back. commitment, can I show you the rest of this outfit? Yes. You're gonna, you're gonna gag. 
when you see this Commit matching, this matching, yeah, this matching fanny pack with this bucket hat. Isn't that everything? Like, eh, she's a Oh my God, girl. The wallet chain, wallet chain, fanny pack, like belt from Hot Topic that's all grommets. Girl, is this what, oh my God, you're so trendy. Is this what it looks like when you've made it? <laughs> <laughs> on wow. trend. We don't say on brand anymore. That's so 2015. We say on trend. You and you you really are. I'm in a black halter top and <laughs> I'm evolving. So I'm evolving into something I, more horrific. You know what I, I here's the thing. I we need to have like foils on the show and I will always be in the same outfit. And that's just something you can you can always know. So I'll always be in a black shirt and gold hoops so you don't have to worry about staying in the same outfit. And I do it for you because I'm selfless. You know what I mean? Thank you. Some of us do suffer and I see that. I see you. I, I One might say heroic. One one might. I, I, I didn't, but I, I would. Right. It's a bold choice, so, but it's your choice. Yes, and it's the right choice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, talking about commitment, girl, what... Uh, let's talk about like unconventional commitments you've made to yourself. Yeah. yeah. So let me preface this by saying tonight, we truly picked a topic that is about fun. Girl, you know what I was thinking about this morning? Like commitments are not fun. Why is that? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, are they about delayed gratification? Are they about like integrity? Right? Like I want to hold to my commitments because that's part of what I think it means to be a good person. Or I want, I want to like make good on my commitments. So people make good on commitments to me. Like, what is it? I was trying to figure out like, what is this thing? Why do we do it? And did you come up with an answer? No, I surely didn't <laughs> that was, uh, get in the chat. No. We want to, we're so curious to know why, why does one commit? I think it's really interesting. I was, um, you know, I think commitment for me is what you do when like no one is looking. Ah. Uh. In a way, like so a commitment to self. Like if you do yoga and if I do yoga and I don't post it on Instagram, did I do yoga? <laughs> like, right? Like the commitment to self or others and like I don't it's know. It's the new tree know. falling in a forest and it doesn't. Well, it's like... kind of like I mean, you know me, I'm not an organized religion, but um, because I was trying to die at the Catholic church told me I was a leper because I was a sinner. Cause of course I was gay. So I had AIDS. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not surprised at all about where, <laughs> where you fall in organized religion. But like the way, one of the things I always hated about religion, uh, was how God like looked over you and you behaved because God was watching. And I always, as a kid, didn't like that. And as an adult, I'm like, well, uh, you could uh, just be a good person. God's watching. <laughs> exactly. Like Elf on the Shelf. Yeah, like it is totally Elf on the Shelf. Like, and I'm like, we're just fucking have a moral compass. And I get yeah. like, I'm like, I don't, like, why do you need this like invisible sky monster to be like, mm -mm, girl, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no. So I guess like for me, commitment is like, what do you do? What, how can you show up in a way like, when no one is watching or when you think no one's watching, right? So if yeah. it's a commitment to a monogamous relationship, like you're on a trip, you're alone mm -hmm. without your partner and you've committed to monogamy or committed to non-monogamy in a way that involves them. So you're not being non-monogamous separately for the record. So whatever yeah. the thing is, and you're at a bar alone and someone talks to you, like the commitment to have the conversation or whatever, but not be like, hey, you know what I mean? Like that's the commitment that your partner may never know about it. You may be, you know what I mean? But it's, it's to self. Yeah. Like that yeah. to me is more of a commitment to self than a commitment to your partner. Yeah. Because it comes first for you. Right. I agree. And I think the secret spice to that is you have to care. Like you have to, the commitment comes from a place of caring about something. So it's like you commit because you care about somebody. You commit to yourself because you're, you're committing to a certain principle or a core value or like an aspiration of improving yourself whatever the case might be, you, you make commitments to your job or volunteering or whatever else it is that you're doing because you actually care about that stuff. So right. if you, if you're having challenges, um, with committing in a certain realm in your life, uh, maybe it's time to question like, where, where are you at with that thing? Like, do you really care? about? Yeah. Um, and also I think caring about things is an important thing in your life, but it, it requires a certain amount of well-being. 
So like if you're if you're not making good on your commitments, how are your resources? How's your mental health? How are you are your basic needs being met? Um, so that's like one that's might say if you've overcommitted. Yeah, are are you looking at anyone in particular with that program? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, no, you know what? Everyone, everyone overcommits. I think, like in Pride Month, all queer folks. Like, just let's say the things. Oh, my first couple years, like making it as a performer, like, I'm putting quotes. Oh, in that paying thing. your dues, right? You have to pay your right? dues. Right. It was like yeah, every Pride show, anything in June, and God, because no one never say your no. Comic, never say no. Yeah, you didn't get booked in July. Right, all the right. straights come out for red, white, and blue, and you, you're screwed. So, like, <laughs> yeah. you took everything, mm -hmm. you know? And I remember one year I made, like, three months rent in Pride Month, but I was just like, why? You know what I mean? Because it was just, but it wasn't, like, good. It wasn't healthy. I just poured myself, like, yeah. into onto the couch for the whole month of July. Because yeah. I was just completely useless. Like, you know, we always, and again, it's that was financial and that was everything else. But for you, you know, we've talked about this, like you got a lot out of it, but you also lost a lot. I mean, it's just exhausting to be at Pride. You pay a cost, you're paying something also um, that you're not going to get back. Uh, mm -hmm. You get fulfillment back, but like by the end of the month, it's fat. It's the Fast and the Furious 6 starring Vin Diesel and you're nowhere to be found because you're, you're in bed, like completely dead, right? Like you have nothing mm -hmm. left. And why would you want to miss Fast 6? I certainly wouldn't. Classic. <laughs> Tokyo no, Drift. Fast Tokyo Drift Part 5 or whatever. I don't first know. Of all, <laughs> first of all, how dare you? That's not Tokyo Drift. I had to watch all eight Fast and the Furious movies on my way to and from Johannesburg because I lost a bet. So I'm very familiar with them. Oh, wow. Was that, my 16, it was a 16 hour flight. So was that bet to uh, Eric Tate or was that, that was that a different situation? Was it, it was a different situation. Okay. It was a different situation, but Eric Tate really pleasured himself, like pleasure, was not pleasured himself by it. Help me. <laughs> Enjoyed it. No, he enjoyed it. Thank you. He enjoyed it. Oh God. Oh, we're gonna get demonetized. Which is why did I use we're his not last name? This at all, so we can say whatever we want. <laughs> this is brought to you by Air Tate and Close Up Magic. Um, yeah. Check out Air Tate. He's a very talented magician. And if you like uh, magic, you can check him out. And if you yeah. like magic, <laughs> I like to, I like. He does a lot out. of like. What is that called? It's like sleight of hand. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just, no, he, he truly, he truly is fabulous. He just okay, makes hand him. spiders. Yeah, he, that's it. he just does the itsy bitsy spider on stage. It's but more like suit. pantomime. Yes. <laughs> so, but you know, um, the, the toll of on pride, and I know we talked a little bit like. Yes, yes. Because you're, and you're I going always, to this. I always call it a pilgrimage on heels. Like walking Aww. in the pride parade is not only a literal pilgrimage because you are going to a place for a reason and you do it in a, on a regular interval. So for me, I feel, I don't know about the spirituality of it. Like I do feel a certain amount of connectedness to the ancestors and the descendants. It's like this walking this route perennially connects us to the history and the movement and where we want to go. Right. So it feels very significant. And I will say that about a lot of things like walking in pride marches, volunteering at booths, doing shows, these things, um, they have meaning for me and for community and movement and whatever. Uh, but I will, I will reiterate that you are also paying a cost and you have to really care, right? You have to really believe in it. You have to want to do it. And, um, if you are, feel like you're turning the crank or you're forcing yourself to do it, don't just don't, because if you're not getting anything out of it, you don't have to be doing it, you know? Um, and yes. I've been trying to commit to do less, Brooke. And that's what, I, that's the energy that the post pandemic energy that I'm trying to manifest for this world is committing to do less Do less because well, I, I go too you... far. And then the worst thing is when you can't make a commitment, you have to pull out of something because mm -hmm. you, you used it all up. You got no energy left and then you got to let somebody down and that sucks. That's not a fun yeah. feeling. You know, I think it's it's interesting because, you know, you mentioned you get a lot out, but you, you pour a lot in. I was at uh, Wilton Manor's Pride this past week, which is um, the gay neighborhood in Fort Lauderdale, the neighborhood. And, la and again, not to be a downer, but, you know, here I am. Mm. Um, last year, someone drove a car through the Pride Parade intentionally to kill people and succeeded. 
Um, so this year, uh, it was a very, you know, they had tanks and they had all these things and, you know, um, never underestimate the toll that takes, you know, and even our moments of celebration that we are vigilant, that we, you know, can't even really let go. And that's a systemic act of violence on the queer community. And then there's individual acts of ignorance and violence, which you had brought up before, where like someone brought up to one of your friends, like they were, they were clockable and I know the truth about you. And it's like, what the fuck? It's pride. Like, what are you going around being like, I think you're trans. What is wrong with people? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Let me, let me paint the picture on that one. So we were about to step off in a pride march on broad and high. We were not half an hour away from the parade, uh, kicking off. And some little old man and his dog and his red hat came up to my friend and said, you know, I'm going to do the like Katya old man voice. Yes. You know what gives you away? It's your wrists. <laughs> and I was like, they really will find us anywhere for any reason <laughs> on any day. Like he just floated like down in the sky on balloons, like an up. And he was just like, you know, what gives you away. You know what I mean? And you'll be like scuba diving. Yeah. And he'll like come down and he'll be like, blah, 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 blah. and like you see spelled out in bubbles. Like your wrists are clockable. Like yeah. what? what is wrong with people? And like, what did you get out of that, man? Like what was the, what was the end goal? I'm, I would love to know. I don't know. I I, I, sometimes I think people are looking for something to say when, in fact, you don't need to say anything and we encourage you not to. You know what I mean? It's like, are you trying to relate? Are you, If you truly are trying to be malicious, then, like, thanks, I hate it. Like, go away. But I really am curious in those moments where a lot of people say things that are well-intentioned. I'm like, how did you think that was well-intentioned? Right. How did what we was, get what... here? Yeah. No. But also, I was like, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time thinking on this because we've got shit to do, you know, like, yeah, I got, I got places to go, but. But it's just like that moment in the peak of like, what is celebration and honoring to have to like do that additional work. What a bummer. What a fucking bummer. Bro, I'm going to be at your funeral. And I'm going to be like, I know the truth. She's not about really, it. she, her hair isn't really purple. It's done. Oh my God, bro! Like her, dead. Don't give away my secrets. <laughs> Don't give them you away. were born, born lavender, <laughs> born this way. This is this. You know what though? I I want um. So I want to return to the earth. You know, ashes to ashes. So I want I want my ashes to be packed into this cute little urn. Maybe puffy painted. I don't know, something, something decorative, something fun, campy, you know, and then I want, I want them to be scattered over a river or something or, or, ooh, maybe that, like that misty mountain at the end of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, just like something mm -hmm. dramatic, you know, just scatter them out and it's just glitter. It's just, <laughs> it's just glitter ashes and people are like, was she ever in there to begin with? But you know, that, that little old man with his dog will show up at the funeral and he'll be like, you know, what gives her away. It's her ashes. <laughs> those ashes don't look feminine enough. Yeah, those ashes are fully clockable. Did you see the Adam's apple on those ashes? <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> also, we're laughing because if not, we cry. Uh, so. Oh, Sam. Sam says, can we use your ashes to, to glitter bomb people? I fully support that. I think that's great. A healthy mix, maybe 80-20. 80, 80 glitter, 80% 80 glitter, 20% ashes. Because I don't want to use up all your ashes. They, they're a limited supply. And we can yeah. do like five glitter bombs. So we'll do like Mitch McConnell. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> Who's getting it next? <laughs> they all get it. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. Biodegradable glitter. Biodegradable. Because I want, you know, everything must return to the earth and, you know, the environment and whatever. But I need glitter. Okay. So write that down. <laughs> right. you know, I always really like want Write that to down, children. Here. Write it down. Now it's a will. I was really wanting to get into funeral services so they could be fun, but I really can't in Florida because it's uh, all sand. So even when I see like graveyards, I'm like, the bodies aren't under those stones. Like just statistically, we're on sand and water. Like they're, <laughs> like, I don't know. It's nice that the tombstones are up, I guess. Isn't but that like, nice? Isn't that nice of them? The water <laughs> is carrying the coffins out to sea. Like I don't think anyone understands what Florida is. It's a swamp. <laughs> 
Well, if you live in Florida, maybe burial, burial's not for you, you know? Like, maybe we could explore some other fun, creative options. Just drop me in the middle of the ocean. Be, I think drop. that'd be great. Viking funeral? Set me on yeah. a boat, light it on fire? Um, maybe light me on fire on land, you know, funeral pyre? That'd be fun. We'll sing some sea shanties. I really love how easily easy and approachable you're making your funeral vow to be. I think creating a funeral pyre is not going to be a violation of any health codes. Everyone's so thank welcome. You. Yeah, as my best friend, I think it's incredibly helpful. I want to die how I lived, making a spectacle of myself. Being an inconvenience to others. <laughs> <laughs> an incandescent inconvenience. An incandescent. Oh, that's a great name for a memoir. An incandescent inconvenience. My story. Me. <laughs> Not as good as my drag name, Dow Jones, but it'll do. <laughs> oh, I love that. But who who could? Frankly, who could even, you know? I feel like Dow Jones is very Charlotte from Sex and the City. Like, I'd put her in a little, like, you know. Yeah. Little well, we thing. commit to a bit. Let's talk about committing when it's not convenient. You know what I mean? When, like... The audience is not on your side anymore and like mm -hmm. half the people have walked out. But you know what? I came here. I came here to accomplish something today and let it let it be known that Eileen Galvin is not one to leave things half assed. So you go full ass. I am going to sit on that third cake. You know what? Full <laughs> I, yeah, I know you had to watch me sit on the first two, but I'm not done. I have five more minutes left in my act. And that cake is not coming home with me. You know, it's interesting because with burlesque, you don't like pivot. So like, like really, like, like with comedy, you. Except like that. <laughs> except like that. <laughs> you actually pivot. Yeah. But like Sorry, comedy, please continue. If, like, if, if I have a joke that's not working, or like, you know what I mean? You get the sense of the crowd and you're like, oh, I made that joke about this. Oh, it didn't hit. Oh. Now I got to cut that joke. Yeah. You know, I think there is a balance to commitment because I do like to commit to the audience as well that like from an intellectual and emotional intelligence standpoint, we're on the same page. So I will adjust, but I think there's a difference between, you know, lack of commitment and, and, you know, well, I think commitment versus compromise, right? How do you find that balance? Because yes, you know, I, I don't start. Well, I do start with an abortion joke because I'm pro-choice, but you know, what do you do kind of, and I've seen comedians like completely back off, you know what I mean? And yeah, like the backpedaling sacrifice their own integrity and their beliefs because they're like, yeah, you know, guns are great. And I'm like, you ain't got, you know what I mean? Or whatever the thing is yeah. to get the laugh, like, where is the line? And like, have you ever pivoted in a burlesque number because of what you've been feeling? In the room? Well, no. And I'll tell you, <laughs> <laughs> you good night, everybody. Yeah. Um, no, I, uh, not, not often. I'm trying to remember. I remember a palpable sensation of the audience turning against you. Have you ever felt it's like a magnetic shift in the room and the air just gets sucked out of it. And you know, when the audience is like, okay, now might be a good time to go to the bathroom. You know what I mean? Like you can sense it as a performer, mm -hmm. but for me, there's not a lot of options. At least I don't I, think so. I'm like, the clothes are still coming off. And yeah. I'm not, I, like, the choreography's do? done. The choreography's done. It's not like I'm going to change the choreography. I think I have, um, uh, sometimes your costuming doesn't come off. Like, you're trying to take your corset off and the hook and eyes are, are caught. Or you didn't get the lacing. We've all been there. Or, We've all been there, mama. The corset is not coming off. And you are, like, trying to tear it off of you. And it's not but making coming. like a good face. You're just like, yeah. Point your toes and smile, right? If you fall, you always have to point your toes and smile. Uh, that's that's like a golden rule of of showgirl. That. That's adorable. Yeah, it is really cute, isn't it? It's like that would be good on a mug. Like point your toes and smile. But that. you don't have a lot of options. But you can like step inside yourself for a moment and be like, okay, the course is not coming off. We have another forty seconds left in this act. Maybe we're not going to get everything off that we thought we were, but we have to do something. Right. So maybe you skip the corset, you take the bra off and you twirl the tassels, or maybe you just kind of, um, you do something else with the end of the act. I mean, I've had, I've had nights where I forgot half the costume at home. So I know. And then you're like, okay, so does anyone have an extra pair of gloves? Does that, you know what I mean? It's kind of like right. stone soup backstage. You're just like, let's, let's get Eileen a costume. Um, 
these, this. but like, that's what you pivot, right? So it's not, you know, I, yeah. I do it's not, it's not something, you know, but that it's that commitment to, okay, I'm going to be doing this. Oh, you know. I thought of a story. So I was talking to, I was having a very, uh, um, engaging conversation on the patio of a bar and, um, it was girl was watching a train wreck unfold. It was like, there's no way I was going to pull myself out of this conversation. So I just like that something in me was just like, we're not walking away from this conversation. I'm mm -hmm. not going to be the one to walk away from this conversation without getting into the nitty gritty gory details of it. But the long and short of it was that I missed my opportunity to go backstage and change into my costume. So I was like, my options are don't go on stage and the show must go on. My other option was go on and do my number in what I was wearing. And thankfully it was cute. So like, it wasn't the end of the world. I had something cute to wear, but basically any disrobing, any layers that were in my number before you can't, right? Cause I'm in, I'm in a walk around outfit. And so my burlesque number basically just became drag. Just wow. lip sync, walk around, collect tips, do a little cute ad lib choreography, and that was it. And that's commitment. Smoke it like a true <laughs> professional. Girl, that is commitment. I, I love had to that. Point my toes and fucking smile. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, nice. as I can't believe we're almost at. 30 minutes. I just can't believe how quickly our time goes. Oh my it's goodness. I could talk to you for hours. <laughs> I truly but yeah, could. let's dish on one like final thought or advice for those struggling in a commitment in their lives. A commitment to anything. It doesn't have to be a commitment to a person. It could be a commitment to self. It could be a commitment to like nature or a deity or whatever you're into. Mm -hmm. My current commitment is to the whore of Babylon. Girl, I mean, get out of my head. Is it like you too? <laughs> we love the horror of Babylon. This this podcast is brought to you by the horror of Babylon. Yeah, a resplendent so, goddess of chaos and discord. Love it and crisis. It. So um, I would say my my yeah. closing thought is definitely like I I I just I feel like you have to joyously fail at commitment. I feel like I fail every day at some form of commitment or another, you know what I mean? Small, tiny fails, mm -hmm. but it's almost like it rips a little bit and it, it heals stronger, like mm -hmm. a muscle. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so much better than it was. And I'm so much more consistent than I was. And, but it's a constant uphill battle. I think you have to give yourself grace for the failure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would add to that and say, um, if you uh, do not, there's a range of magnitude of commitments. Yeah. Um, but when you don't, when you don't make a commitment or someone doesn't make a commitment to you, it is an opportunity to engineer forgiveness and yeah. forgiveness doesn't just happen. That's why I say engineer forgiveness. Like you have to, yeah. if you want to be in relationship with someone or yourself in a healthy way, you have to process it in a way that will truly help you heal and move on from that. So if it's like, I said I was going to run at 6 a.m. this morning and I didn't. It's like, well, I got to, I got to, that's an easy one, right? Like I got to forgive myself and move on with my day. That doesn't take yeah. a lot of energy or effort or whatever. But if it's like I had a boundary in my relationship and broke it or right. didn't make good on a commitment, like, oh, I was, I don't know, I'm thinking of something silly now. Like I said I was going to join you to visit your family for Christmas and like I bailed and had something else that I had to do. Even yeah. if it was something else really urgent came up and it wasn't your fault, you still have to be like, okay, I can't just, I can't obsess over it forever. Like you have to work with the other person on that forgiveness, but you also can't, you can't just pretend like nothing happened. Right. It's like, okay, I know that this is not going to be a one-time thing. We're going to have to talk about this multiple times. I'm going to have to try to show you like rebuild trust over time and show you that I am reliable. And, um, so don't, don't, uh, try to take shortcuts. To like yeah. actually think about what is it going to take to get over this? How can we recommit to each other again? Love that girl. Well, if you want to commit to us, we would love to see you next Tuesday and every Tuesday. Oh baby. Right it's here. so, it's so easy to commit to us. You can like <laughs> us on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram. You can subscribe to us on YouTube, all kinds of dish content on all these platforms. My favorite thing about YouTube, Brooke, is you can rewatch all of our reruns. You can reheat the dish. Reheat the dish! Whenever you so oh, choose. Oh, I love you. 
I love you too, and I hope that you are able to forgive me for uh, questionable fashion choices. <laughs> <laughs> I am loving Gen Z, baby. I mean, bye, y'all. All right, bye. See you next Tuesday.